let's take a walk so what we're gonna do today guys is we're gonna take a walk down this old forest road that's not on the map we'll find a nice place to sit down and have lunch we'll discuss the gear that I have with me and then we'll walk on out of here but because of where I'm at I really kind of want to be halfway quiet because we're liable to run into something wild out here. Pretty nice, huh? I think this one right here will work just fine. Give me a second and we'll uh, get down to business. It's my gun and if I want to stick it in the mud, I will. Alrighty guys, pay no mind to that shooting. Those people are at a range. If you've ever been in the Dixon Field area, you know that that first trailer home that's out there on the edge of the forest, it belongs to a forestry worker. He also has a range set out there in his yard. They're not shooting in this direction. They're just out there shooting. When I drove by there, there was probably 20 trucks and a few cars. Women and children running around everywhere, people cooking and stuff, so I'm assuming it's some kind of a hunting club party. Looked like they were having a great time, so pay no mind. All right. This here belt is something new to me. Full disclosure, it's a piece of Chinese shit. I bought it at Harbor Freight for like $8.99. It's like a construction worker's belt. It's real heavy riveted and whatnot I felt like well for eight bucks it's worth a try I can darken it up some more it was a real light color I put some uh, neat's feet oil on it it darkened it up some I may end up using some dye but anyway so heavy duty leather belt all right and then right here is an old-fashioned compass pouch and it's my fire kit I have my ferro rod in there. And I like using a jigsaw blade. This is a Bosch jigsaw blade. Very, very good metal. And of course, this here's my ferro rod. It's a, I uh, guess it's a Bayite. Got it off of Flea Bay. Works really great. I bought two of them. I don't think I'll even wear this one out, but I do have an extra one. Bought them because they had a hole pre-drilled in them. And in this little box, it's nothing complex, but it's everything that I need to do uh, what I need to do when it comes to fire building. What I have in here is a piece of uh, resin to juke twine or whatever they call it. I have some pieces of fat wood, genuine Crotan National Forest fat wood. Really wish you guys could smell it. It smells like pure non-chemical pine saw, if that makes sense. These here cotton balls, that is some sawdust and Vaseline mixed in together. And this here is like a cardboard compressed wax thing that you use to uh, start fires with. I've used it. It's all right, but I don't think it's worth the price. 
I've had the best luck with just plain old fashioned cotton balls, Vaseline, maybe a little bit of sawdust and fat wood. And all this stuff here is capable of igniting when it's wet or damp. And the reason I don't have a big lighter with duct tape around it in this kit is because I got one in my pocket. So, uh, lighten up, Francis. <laughs> Alright, this is a, your standard old school IFAC. Behind the box I have a compress. And in here, I've got a razor, a bandana, I've got some cordage, another compress. I got a burn kit in here. I got some band-aids and uh, some neosporin. Just some very, very basic stuff. And considering where I'm at in the Crotan most of the time, if I really got into a jam, I'd just get on my phone and call someone that cared. Alright, and this here is a canteen pouch, but it's just a utility pouch for me. And what I have in here is lunch. Alright, so I got a can of peaches. For those of you that follow the channel, you know what this is. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is a mare. A meal almost ready to eat. And what I do is I dehydrate meat and vegetables. And then I'll put them in a vacuum seal bag and... Uh, I can boil some water, put some water in there, let it soak about 15-20 minutes, and I got lunch. So what's in here today is I've got some Raymond noodles, I've got some dehydrated vegetables, I know for a fact that there's some spinach in there, there's some carrots in there, there is some peppers in there, there might be a couple of potatoes, spinach, might be some black olives in there, maybe a couple mushrooms, but it's going to be kind of a Asian type meal, right? Okay. It's a bottle of alcohol for my stove. This here is some matches for the stove. What I got here is an old fashioned film canister. I got a couple strikers in there, some wooden matches, and of course, duct tape. This here is a spork, fork, knife kind of thing with a can opener and this thing here is a whistle. So this is a multifunctional tool. This here is my handy dandy pot holder. Swiss Army knife. German Esbot stove with heat tabs in it. And over here is my alcohol stove. I've made this out of a couple of beer cans. This here is my Hungarian mess kit. Now normally I would just take one of these mares, put the hot water in there, let it soak for about 15-20 minutes in an insulated bag and I'd eat it. But today we're going to do it a little different. We're going to pour it into the uh, pot and brew it on up, right? This here is a American canteen and canteen pouch. In these little side pouches I have spices and tea and a K-bar. So give me a minute, we'll get the uh, kitchen going and we'll make some lunch. Alrighty guys, I decided to not risk balancing my meal on a log. Even though I tried to shave it a little bit and make a flat spot, I don't trust it. So here we are down in the dirt. That's why you bring a ground cloth or a poncho or something to sit on. This here is my alcohol stove called a penny stove. Real quick rundown. What you do is you cut the bottoms of two beer cans off put some uh, insulation in there then you poke a bunch of holes in it and you poke some in the center you fill it up with alcohol 
you light it on fire, give it a second to burn, and you put a copper penny. Got to be a copper penny, guys, an old one prior to 1980. This one's a 1976. And then this is a simmer ring. You put it on top there. It sort of works. But let's uh let's fill this stuff up. What I am going to do first, now normally on those mares, I'd pour the hot water in there and let it sit. We're gonna do it a little different today. I'm gonna pour it in the pot because I want to cook. Don't want to just eat out of a bag. So now I got enough for tea. Put a little more in there. Still got some left over. We'll let that soak. We'll brew up some tea. And then we will cook this. I do believe I will be cooking with a heat tab and not the alcohol stove. I'll use the alcohol stove to heat up the water. So we'll put that right there like that. Put that right there like that. make sure your thing will, your pot will fit on the stove there we go okay we're good now all right now this old bottle here I put some lines on there if I remember right it's about an ounce and a half or something like that I usually just fill it up and let it burn out put it in a little at a time when you make a small one like this it'll hold about an ounce and a half two ounces maybe all right now so that thing slapped full and then I spill a little off to the side it will help uh, help it work its magic Because what happens when you put the penny on there, it ends up looking and working a lot like a burner on a stove. And just remember, it's blue flame, you ain't going to see it unless you put your hand over it. And it's definitely there. That should start creating a vacuum and boiling and steaming and all that kind of magical science stuff. Ouch, son of a bitch. And watch out because the fucking fire's hot. Damn. All right. Kids, that's why we always say, don't try this at home. I'm a trained professional. I can't believe I did that. All right, so now anywhere from uh, three to eight minutes, that's going to be boiling. All right, guys, that is a half a canteen cup full of water, and it was boiling like that right there. This is now, we're at the four-minute mark. So with that alcohol stove at four minutes, it's boiling enough water for a cup of tea. So I guess if you're wanting to boil enough for uh, tea and a dehydrated meal, you'd probably have to fill the whole cup up. It would probably take close to eight minutes. But as you can see, it's boiling real good. Let's make a cup of tea. All right, we ain't playing that crap again. Now, 
I don't know how much burn time I have left here, but uh, I am going to put this in here. And let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, it gets half cooked, and then I put a heat tab on there and cook it up the rest of the way. Alrighty guys, it really could have used a little bit more water, but you know, I managed to spill the water I had. Which leads me to believe that next time out, we will be taking two canteens. <clears throat> so we'll doctor this up with some uh, soy sauce and everything should be good. Full disclosure, I did fill my uh, alcohol stove back up because I didn't really want to waste one of these. I've been told these things burn about 14 minutes, so that's more than enough to uh, heat up some water and cook your dinner and everything, but I didn't really want to waste one of these for another five minutes worth of cooking, so uh, like I said, I gassed her up and used it a second time. And if you're using an alcohol stove and you need to recharge it, make good and damn sure that not only it's burned out, that it's cool to the touch. Okay, dope, guys, that's what it looks like. Vegetables, chicken, and noodles. Not bad. I'm going to turn the camera off. And the tea is really good. I put a little bit of uh, brown sugar in the tea. Let me go ahead and eat this, and we'll be right back. Alrighty, guys. Never forget. Always clean up your mess and do the best you can to leave no trace. Pack it in, pack it out. Alrighty, guys. So we had a wonderful day in the woods. Uh, the only change I'm going to make on my belt is I'm going to add another canteen. Definitely, because... Uh, I had enough water for a cup of tea, my lunch, and a little extra, and I spilled it, so lesson learned. I always have a plan B, bring an extra canteen. So with that being said, what do you say we uh, walk on out of here, follow me, I know a shortcut. What? Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, yeah, I hear you, I hear you, yeah. Yeah, I almost forgot to talk up there. Almost forgot to talk about my uh, smoke stick, right? Okay. What we have here is a vintage paratrooper SKS. I bought this thing, I think it was 1993. I originally bought it because I was going to use it as a deer hunting rifle. I figured the uh, cut down paratrooper model would make an excellent brush gun for hunting out here in the Croton National Forest and other places similar to this. It is absolutely the way I bought it, except I did put a extending pad on here, not because these things kick like a mule, but because they're made for Asians. So this gave me about another inch and a quarter of pull, right? And if I could find another one of these, I'd probably extend it another inch or so. My uh, sling, this came off a leather briefcase. So, it's stock. I used to have 30 round magazines for this, but they're heavy. They're a pain in the ass to get in and out, and sometimes they jam. This gun here was designed to be used with stripper clips, so 
we should be using stripper clips that works the best you just got to learn how to use them and because we are in a non-tactical situation out here I brought 40 rounds with me all right and they're just in my pocket so I've got two stripper clips right here and that is vintage East Block communist ammunition really good stuff really hot I got another stripper clip over here and I got ten in the box well actually I got nine in the box and I got one in the pipe And for all you experts out there whining right now because I got one hot in the pipe well that's what this fucking safety switch is for so With that being said, oh, did I tell you that when I bought this thing in 93, I paid like $104 for it. They had the long versions, and they were like $93, I think, and then these ones here were like $105 because they had to cut the barrel down and put the different pig sticker on it, blah, 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 blah. But it was brand new, packed in grease. Why did I buy a communist gun? Well, what better way to kill a commie for mommy than with a commie gun? With that being said, let's get on out of here.